Imagine a city where all your energy is powered by renewables, where people grow food on top of their homes. A city that is full of vibrant parks. A city that not only has a thriving economy, but is socially inclusive. Well, that's exactly what our visionary today is attempting to do. Peter Head, director of leading engineering firm Arup, is a highly regarded urban designer who's seen as a champion of eco cities. He's currently involved in building the world's first eco city in China. In 2008, Peter was recognized as one of the heroes of the environment by the Time magazine for his contribution to sustainable development. Peter, thank you so much for joining us. To start with, we'd like to know uh, what your thoughts are on the world's urbanization up till now. Yes, happy to do that. But basically, the world's urbanization, particularly in the West, that led the urbanization process, has been very, very focused on using masses of non-renewable materials and fossil fuels and so on. And in the, in the Industrial Revolution, there, were, there was plenty of that material available. And so we've continued that process, which has really been very wasteful and is encouraging us to live in cities in a very wasteful way. And we've just reached the point when India and China have started to copy that model with India and China's massive urbanization program, that we're beginning to hit the buffers on the availability of those materials. And that's made us reevaluate really how we're doing this. And of course, realizing that if we continue down that route, the costs and the health impacts and all of the, the real costs associated with that are going to overwhelm the economy. So I think we've realized that that model doesn't work, that the industrial model of developing cities and living in cities is actually very wasteful. It's noisy, there's pollution, there's environmental damage, health problems, and really it's not the best way for human development to continue. So we're looking for a new model. In today's age, how important is it for uh, future cities of the world to be sustainable? Well, sustainability, of course, can mean, mean many things, but essentially what we're talking about is the ability for human development to continue and accelerate at the same time as looking after the planet and the natural world and, and the ecology of the world. At the moment, this industrial model is damaging the ecology of the planet, which, of course, keeps us alive. So we've got to stop that damage and we've got to find a new way of living in harmony with the planet itself. So sustainability really now means reducing carbon dioxide emissions dramatically in the way we're living and also reducing our ecological footprint, reducing the amount of non-renewable materials and moving to using renewables and closing resource loops in cities and making them much more resource efficient. So that's really what sustainability means. And we think that human development will really flourish in this new model. And so in developed world, we've got to retrofit our cities to make them more resource efficient. And in India and China and, and other uh, countries which are urbanizing still, and Africa, we've got to actually take this or find these new models that work in harmony with the natural world. And that will create a sustainable future. Talk to us about the uh, sustainable initiatives that Arup has been involved with and the ones that you have uh, personally led. Yes. Well, I suppose the most high-profile work we're doing is in China, because in China, China started its urbanization process, and I guess it's probably about a third to a half of the way through, it, using the Western model, and created massive pollution, massive health problems, massive resource price escalation and the Chinese government realized about five years ago that this model was no longer the right model and they wanted to develop eco cities the ecological age uh, transition so we managed to be appointed to design some demonstrator eco cities in China uh, one in uh, near Shanghai called Dongtang one near a Beijing called Wangzhuang and another at Huzhou and those demonstrator plans and city developments have enabled us to explore what it would really mean to design and build an ecological city. And so we've just reached the stage where we have the plans and then the implementation will then follow. So I think that's given us and a lot of people in the world a lot of excitement that there is a solution. You know, there is a way of actually fashioning 
cities where we can live in harmony with the natural world, uh, with much less pollution, and with human development that can flourish without the constraints of fossil fuel fixed um, systems. One of the uh, frameworks that we use to sort of fashion the ideas is a framework called biomimicry, which is a framework which actually copies the way that natural organisms live on the planet. And uh, there is a, there's a list of 10 biomimicry principles, and one of them is gathering and using energy efficiently. Another one is using waste as a resource. Another one is running on information and optimizing systems rather than maximizing them, and so on. And so what we're doing is using those ideas. And what that means actually is in the cities of the future, we would make them, first of all, places where people can use simple ways to get around. So they can walk and cycle between where they live, where they work, where the children go to school, where the leisure and cultural facilities are and where the shops are. Um, so people don't have to use cars and lots of energy and fossil fuels and so on. Um, so the layout of the city is one that makes it walkable and, and has reasonably high density. Density is really important because with higher density you can have public transport which can be affordable. So we can have just buses probably or maybe a tram to get people around. And then we have really good public spaces, we have green in the streets and that's important to stop the heat island effect. If you have lots of hard landscape the heat builds up in the city and then you need more energy to cool it down. Whereas if you have green in the streets, green roofs on the buildings, food, food being grown within the city, then the city doesn't heat up so much. You're absorbing the energy and using it in the city, uh, but it doesn't heat it up so you have to cool it down again. So uh, the other thing is water management. Within this rather green walkable place, you also have canals and lakes and those are used to catch and store the water and recycle it. And by doing that, you also have nice spaces where you can walk and cycle alongside canals and, and lakes. And so it becomes a place where, like we are sitting here with butterflies around us, one, one is walking and, and enjoying the natural world in your daily life. We actually believe from research that's been done in some cities that if people have access to biodiversity all the time, then they actually have a happier mental state, you know, that mental health is improved. So there are lots of ways that we're trying to understand the interaction between human beings and human development and the natural world. Also the new city that you're designing in China, Dongtang, uh, is often referred to as the largest uh, sustainability project in the world. How different is it from uh, existing world cities. The first thing is our client said right from the very beginning of the project that he wanted all the energy for the, for the transport, for the vehicles, for the buildings, for the infrastructure, for the water treatment and everything. Wanted all of that to come from renewable resources. And that was hugely challenging. In fact, when we started, we weren't sure it was even possible. Uh, but obviously by driving resource efficiency in, in the way we design and organize the city, then we found with using much less energy and bringing in uh, biomass and wind and sun's energy and so on, we could actually make that happen. So probably that's the most uh, obvious thing. But of course, if you go to a city running on renewables, it doesn't actually look any different. It's just actually organized in that way. But I think the, the, the thing that is most different in terms of the way it looks and feels will be the fact that the vehicles will all run on, on renewables and they'll either be electric or hydrogen fuel cells and that means they'll be quiet. So actually the first and obvious thing about the city will be there will be no traffic noise and that will be wonderful. <laughs> and uh, so particularly sitting here, <laughs> it would be lovely if it was quiet and you could hear the birds and, uh, and, no and nothing else. And I think that's probably going to be the most stunning difference. I think the other thing is it will be very green, there will be lots of trees, uh, lots of uh, birds and butterflies and, and wildlife, and with green roofs, lots of insects and biodiversity. Uh, and so that combination, I think, will make it feel very different.